stop at, at one o'clock and we will do one more if no one tells us to stop. Um, okay. Here's one that comes from the voyageur singing tradition where songs would be used that could be fit the rhythm of the paddling um, by the voyageurs in Quebec. And it's Frenga Frenga. Please pick up on the chorus and sing right along. And, uh, Mon père a fait bâtir maison, Frenga Frenga sous l'aviron. Wonderful music. So can I leave my stuff, my toys behind, or is there going to be dancing up here? <laughs> Je pense pas. <laughs> no, I don't think there'll be any dancing. Okay, I'll just yeah. uh, are we good on the microphone? Oh, great, thank you. All right, I am Lise Verdineau. I am the honorary consul to France in the state of Vermont. I am a chevalier, which means I was knighted by the president of France because of all the French projects I've done over the years. And I am a Francophone in the sense that my parents were French, and they were from Quebec, and I grew up speaking French. I did not even know how to speak English until I was like in second grade. So it's a great example of why learning French in schools is so important and, and professionally it's opened doors for me, given me opportunities and I get to be here today to introduce some wonderful people that do wonderful things in French, um, in French heritage and French language. So on that note, I will now introduce you to the mayor of Winooski. So yes, she is here with us. <laughs> 
So Christine Locke, Mayor Open Escape. Bienvenue. Uh, welcome. If you are not from Winooski, welcome to Winooski. And if you are, it's nice to see you. Um, I'm Mayor Christine Lott, and I'm pleased to welcome you all here for this celebration of Francophone culture. And special thanks to the Winooski School District for welcoming us into this beautiful performing arts space. Um, on March 11th, our Winooski City Council adopted a resolution recognizing March as Francophonie Month in Winooski. And I will read that now. Whereas the French language is the official language of 29 countries and 444 million people, and one of many languages currently spoken by residents in our community, a strong Francophone presence has existed in Winooski since the first French explorers came to this area, followed by French Canadian immigration in the 1800s, uh, marking a lasting impression on our mill industry and making Winooski one of the largest industrialized places in Vermont at the time providing employment opportunities for French, Canadian, Polish, Syrian, Lebanese, Irish, and Italian families looking for work. In 1868 was established the St. Louis Covenant, I'm sorry, the St. Louis Convent, now St. Francis Xavier School, where instruction was provided by the Sisters of Providence of Montreal, who brought Quebec published French language books, promoting literacy in French to ensure retention of their students' language and skills. The St. Francis Xavier Church, established in the same year, allowed Francophone residents to attend Mass and receive the sacraments in their own language and according to their own customs. The Twin Spire Church stands today as the most visible reminder of the presence of the French community in Winooski. The French had their own hospital, Fanny Allen, established in 1894, as well as a college, St. Michael's, established in 1904 in nearby Winooski Park, Colchester now. And although founded to provide services to the French in their native language, the benefits of these institutions were available to non-French speakers, as well as these institutions serving the community to this day. And whereas the city of Winooski continues to welcome new immigrants and refugees, currently welcoming new residents from French-speaking countries throughout the continent of Africa, and whereas the long-standing tradition of celebrating French Heritage Day continues with support from the city of Winooski, from downtown Winooski and the Alliance Francois Lake Champlain region. So therefore be it resolved that the mayor and city council of the city of Winooski recognize March as Francophonie Month in the city of Winooski, kicking off today with this event. Thank you. I, I want to say, you know, that um, we traditionally done this event in Burlington and Montpelier over the years, and this year we wanted to spread it out to all the other French uh, Francophone communities, and Winooski certainly came to mind, and I want to thank uh, personally Mayor Lott for stepping up and hosting our event today. Merci beaucoup. She she mentioned St. Michael's College. We have with us in attendance today uh, Peter Van Tyne. He's a professor and director of French language at St. Michael's College. Thank you for being here. So, we have some special guests from Mount Abraham Union High School that are going to tell us a little bit about themselves and what studying French means to them. So if Anna Marie, Anna, Neil, and Sienna can come on up. And as we wait for them to get up here, it's really important that we do our part as adults and promoting uh, youth in languages, including French language, around the world. So today, I am pleased, I'm not sure if, if I'm gonna introduce you by name first, but Anna Marie, you were first. Bonjour, je m'appelle. Is it on? Oui, is it on? Yes. Okay. Je m'appelle Annie Dufault et j'habite à Moncton, Vermont. Je suis ici avec mes camarades de classe de français au lycée Mount Abraham. On va partager nos réponses à la question C'est quoi le français pour vous? Pour moi, le français est important pour beaucoup de raisons. La langue est un portail d'opportunités, expériences et apprentissage. 
J'ai commencé à apprendre la langue parce que j'ai quelques membres de ma famille qui parlent et j'étais entouré par la culture francophone. Tout au long de lycée, le français a été un de mes cours préférés. C'était toujours un cours que j'attendais avec impatience. Il n'y a aucun autre cours où on étudiait non seulement une langue, mais aussi des cultures du monde. C'est une expérience très unique. J'ai maintenant les ressources de connecter avec des gens d'origine différente, avec des histoires à raconter. Les, les langues sont irremplaçables. Le français compte beaucoup pour moi. C'est quelque chose que je ne vais jamais prendre pour acquis. Merci beaucoup. Bonjour, je m'appelle Anna Stowell et j'habite à Lincoln, Vermont. J'ai choisi d'étudier les français pour plusieurs raisons. Je pense qu'il est important d'apprendre d'autres langues que la vôtre. De plus, le français me permet d'entrer en contact avec d'autres personnes qui ne parlent pas forcément l'anglais. C'est aussi utile pour travailler ou pour voyager. J'ai choisi de prendre le français parce que ma mère a grandi en apprenant le français avec sa mère et mon frère a pris des cours de français au lycée. Ma grand-mère était au professeur de mathématiques et de français au lycée où c'est comme ça qui ce que ma mère a pris les langues. J'espère continuer à apprendre les langues à l'université l'année prochaine. Merci. Bonjour, je m'appelle Nell Harvey et j'habite à Moncton, Vermont. Pour moi, la langue française est une façon de connecter aux autres à travers le monde. Pendant l'automne de l'année passée, j'ai eu l'opportunité d'étudier en France pour un semestre. C'était un rêve pour moi, donc j'ai tassé une grande valise et j'ai quitté les États-Unis. À début, j'ai pensé que le semestre serait un peu difficile avec beaucoup de moments amusants. J'avais très tort, mais dans la meilleure façon. Chaque moment était un défi, mais j'essayais beaucoup de nouvelles choses comme la nourriture, les sujets, les sports et plus. À la fin du semestre, j'avais fait les grands progrès dans mon niveau de la langue française mais ce n'était pas aussi important que les choses que j'ai vécues. Grâce au français, euh, j'ai découvert la nouvelle culture, j'ai rencontré des gens formidables et je suis allée sur beaucoup d'aventures nouvelles. J'espère étudier plus de la langue française à l'université et de travailler comme une liaison entre un pays francophone à l'avenir. Merci beaucoup. Bonjour tout le monde, je m'appelle Sienna et j'habite à Moncton avec ma mère, ma père, ma petit frère et mes deux chiens. Uh, pour moi, le français est une façon de participer à une autre communauté et culture. Étudier le français est une façon d'explorer le monde, tant physiquement et mentalement. Le français est un lien avec mes amis, ma famille et ma communauté. C'est une forme d'expression et une forme d'art. J'ai l'intention de parcourir le monde et de découvrir les différentes cultures. Le français m'a donné de nombreuses opportunités. Je suis reconnaissant pour la communauté que j'ai trouvé. La langue et la culture française sont incroyables et j'ai la chance d'avoir l'opportunité de participer à une communauté incroyable. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Thank you. Before Before they get off the stage, as you notice, it was all in French, so I hope they're getting French credit. <laughs> very well done, very well spoken, and for those of us who understood the French, the stories were everything about why they were um, studying French and what it meant to them and their families, and the opportunities that happened because they were studying the French language. So I will thank you again for coming on up. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you so you. much. <laughs> Our next, our next speaker is Anson Tebet, and Anson is the Secretary of Vermont Agency of Commerce and Community Development. I have uh, worked with Anson before in many different uh, French promotions. We do a lot of work with uh, Quebec and, and agriculture. 
Um, there's a lot of opportunity for the state of Vermont to participate in French um, exploration and I think having someone like Anson Tebbe be able to come here today on behalf of the state of Vermont uh, to say a few words about his programs. Anson. Well, thank, thank you very much. Now, before I go too far, I have to do my social media, so you've got to, you've got to help me with this. Thank you, Mr. C. Thank you, now A. So hold on a second here. We have a document. We know what everything social media is active, right? So, all right, so I've got it going here. Now, on the count of three, I want you to shout to back, okay? Let's do a practice run, okay? Uh, one, two, three. Okay, now we're gonna now we're gonna do it for real, okay? One, two, three. Gosh, you're good. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, students. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I took French. I went to a little school called Cabot. You remember Cabot, Vermont? You've probably heard of it. They make cheese there as well. So I went to Cabot High School. We had a wonderful French program. And I'm still friends with my French teacher. When I took fourth year French, if we had time, we were allowed to play French Scrabble. And we'd go down to the Cabot Village store, they'd send me down to get Perrier water, and we'd play French Scrabble. So, uh, and it stays with you as, as part of our messaging. It stays with you all. I'm a big baseball fan. Today is opening day of baseball. And wouldn't have been nice if Quebec, we had our Montreal Expos back, and we always can hope that that's going to happen again. But I've been to many games up there, and in fact, there was a game in the 80s, so they went way back, the 1980s. I was a junior in high school. We skipped school with my history teacher who was a baseball fan and went to a playoff game, a one-game playoff between the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Montreal Expos, and Rick Monday hit a home run and the Expos lost. But that was before a lot of security. We just, you know, checked in the guys and we went up there and we spent a day, it was snowing that day up there as well. Enough of the silliness. Uh, I want to thank you all for being here. Uh, our partnership with Quebec, with the farm community, and our products is really, really important. Our biggest trading partner uh, in Quebec. Um, we are um, going, the Vermont will be represented at a big food show in Montreal uh, in May, Seattle. And we'll have some of our, we'll have a Vermont producer there trying to sell cheese in Quebec, which is really, really a, not an easy thing to do. Uh, but it is a wonderful opportunity, and it's a great relationship we have uh, with Quebec. Now, yes. Could you, so one of my one of my things, the governor could not be here today, so it's appropriate if I read this now. Yes. So this is so everyone. This is a this is uh, comes from Governor Scott. Pretend that he's he's written this. He signed it. So I'm going to read it as I am Governor Scott. So here we go. It shouldn't take too long, so bear with me. Uh, State of Vermont, Executive Department of a Proclamation. So this is a proclamation. Whereas the French language is spoken by 300, pe 300 million people in nearly 90 countries and in five continents. And whereas March 20th is International Day of La Francophonie, celebrating the bond between Francophone regions around the world and their shared values of democracy, human rights, culture, diversity, and solidarity. And whereas the speaking of French and its expression and affirmation of people's cultural identity, and whereas a strong Francophone presence has existed for centuries in Vermont, from the first explorers along the coast of North, Africa, North America to the strong 19th and 20th century French-Canadian immigrant community. And whereas the name of our great state, Vermont, Green Mountain, and many of our towns and places bear French names such as Montpelier, Lake Champlain and Virgins, and whereas a number of Vermont towns, institutions, organizations recognize La Carfone as a vector for economic development by joining or developing initiatives such as Burlington's French Friendliness Resolution, and whereas Vermont is home to French speakers who contribute 
positively on a daily basis to the lives of livelihood of all citizens. And whereas Vermont values its strong history, culture, economic relationships with the Francophone world, a relationship driven by common goals and shared values, and whereas the month of La Francophonie will take place during the month of March 2024, offering Vermont residents the opportunity to celebrate and discover the French language. Now, therefore, I, Philip B. Scott, Governor, proclaim March 2024 as Francophonie Month in Vermont. Given under my hand in the great seal of the state of Vermont on this 18th day of March AD 2024, signed Philip B. Scott, the governor. And I want to show you how special this is. It's got the seal. There it is. Congratulations, what a wonderful day. Thank you for celebrating. You know, when you get a proclamation like this with a seal from the governor, from the Montpelier, from the capital, it's very, very special, okay? It doesn't happen all the time. You are all part of this heritage that you are here celebrating with us today. Because do you know that just because you don't speak French growing up, it doesn't mean you don't have French roots. So and we have the French flag here. Anybody see this one, okay? This is the country of France. Right? We think of France, we think of French. And then we have Quebec. We've talked about Quebec, this blue and white one here, which is our neighbors to the north, as well as Canada, which has French and English. And then Vermont, we have French and English and many other languages, as well in the United States. So, with that said, when we are in Vermont and we want to celebrate Vermont, French in Vermont, it is something like this, and the mayor of Winooski who came up and read her city council um, proclamation, it says we are, we are important. It's important for us to continue to do these things that are French heritage. The students that were speaking today, it's so important that you are learning this in school and then you're speaking it so well. So on that, I will now introduce uh, Tate Brooks, he's the Deputy Secretary of the Vermont Agency of Commerce and the Community Development and has also worked with several different projects with France, Quebec, um, and Canada and other countries as well. And he's here today to have a few words and talk about his experiences. Tate. Let's see, please. Bonjour, salute. I wasn't going to talk about the Expos today, but since Anson brought it up, <laughs> growing up in St. Albans, I used to, and my family used to often go up on Sundays to watch the Expos and have the opportunity to watch Pedro Martinez, <clears throat> who later won the World Series with the Red Sox, and I see Anson smiling. Uh, and I know uh, many of those, uh, many of us in, in central Vermont and northern Vermont still, uh, uh, still relish those days and look and hope uh, for, for those opportunities uh, in the future. Um, well, thank you for inviting me to speak here at Francophonie Celebration. It's wonderful to have representatives from Quebec and France here with us today to honor our shared heritage, as well as our current partnerships and relationships. I'd like to thank you to Winooski and Mayor Watt for hosting us and the wonderful musicians for performing here this afternoon. Uh, thank you to the students for learning French, Francais, and sharing your love of language with us. Merci beaucoup. Vermont's relationship with Quebec and France are invaluable. It's been said many times, but I'll repeat it again today. Quebec is Vermont's largest trading partner. So keeping lines of communication and commerce open are vital to the success of this region. And we are grateful to have such willing and capable partners across the pond with whom we work and those also across the border. As the Deputy Secretary for Commerce and Community Development, I thought it would be appropriate to delve into the numbers that measure the financial success of these relationships. Here are a few. In 2023, 75 Canadian-owned businesses employed nearly 3,000 Vermonters. The vast majority of those companies are headquartered in uh, the province of Quebec. 
In 2023, Vermont imported $2.6 billion in Canadian goods and $91.2 million in goods from France. That year, Vermont exported $680 million in goods to Canada and $35 million worth of goods to France. Vermont welcomes more than 2 million Canadians each and every year who contribute more than $200 million annually to our economy. Also worth noting, half of Vermont's electricity comes from Quebec. So the province is literally helping Vermont keep the lights on. The state of Vermont has a regional office in Montreal to support and encourage Canadian companies to think about Vermont as a place to grow or expand their U.S. presence. Just last month, Quebec-based Leroux, which makes front-loader mounted snowblowers, launched Leroux America. DMS Machining and Fabrication in Barrie is now assembling, welding, and painting some of Leroux's snowblowers. Leroux America's new footprint in Vermont and the numbers I just mentioned reinforce what we are celebrating today, successful partnerships. The Scott administration is committed to keeping these relationships healthy and thriving, not just to benefit for Vermont, but for our French speaking partners as well. Thank you again for inviting me here today and happy International Francophonie Day to all. We'll see. Great, thank you, thank you. This is really nice. You know, the state of Vermont also has a program called Think Vermont, and it's Think Vermont when you're looking to bring in business. And we, by having French community and welcoming of students and people who uh, want to do business here, it's really important to the future of Vermont to have more francophone and French-speaking people in business. So all of you who are sitting there speaking in French at the podium today. You're part of that future and the future generation to help bring economy back in, into Vermont from other countries that speak French because it makes you feel welcome when you go to a place where they speak your language. Okay, So even though you're in Vermont, United States, if you can have French as a second language, a third language, it's really helpful to your personal career. So with all the young people in the audience today, um, thank you. On that note, um, I will introduce you now to a few more students from Mount Abraham. If we can have Caitlin and Joanna, come on up. And Piper. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, are you in French or in English this time? French. In French, okay. <laughs> Écoutez très bien. Everyone listen very carefully. <laughs> All right, introduce yourself. Bonjour, je m'appelle Kaylin. J'ai 17 ans et j'habite à Moncton, Vermont. Je voulais apprendre le français parce que je voulais savoir parler une autre langue et je pensais que la langue française était belle. Donc, il était facile de choisir de prendre un cours de français dans mon lycée. C'était un peu plus difficile de prendre que j'avais pensé, mais j'ai continué quand même. Je ne comprenais pas tous les mots que j'ai entendus, mais je pouvais comprendre les émotions. Grâce à ça, j'ai appris que la langue n'est pas seulement une question des mots. C'est ce que nous en faisons. Donc, pour moi, le français est une façon de m'exprimer ainsi que d'être une autre langue dans mon répertoire. Et avec cette autre façon de m'exprimer, je peux me connecter avec plus de monde d'une manière significative pour moi. Mais je peux aussi me connecter avec moi-même. Quand je parle français, je suis une personne différente. Et cette version de moi est une autre partie de ma personnalité que je veux célébrer. Merci beaucoup. Bonjour, je m'appelle Joanna, j'ai 18 ans et j'habite à Starksburg, Vermont. Pour moi, le français n'est pas juste une langue que j'étudie, c'est un mode d'expression. C'est incroyable que j'ai l'opportunité de communiquer avec mes camarades dans une langue étrangère. C'est un peu comme une langue secrète qui est juste pour nous. C'est une langue complexe avec beaucoup de détails et règles, mais c'est pourquoi c'est si amusant et satisfaisant d'apprendre. Mais le français est aussi une façon de comprendre. C'est une façon de communiquer avec les gens d'autres pays et cultures. 
Nous pouvons parler avec les Français, les Sénégalais, les Haïtiens, mais aussi les Québécois dans notre propre jardin. Ça, je pense, est la raison pour laquelle j'ai choisi le français en première place, pour communiquer avec nos voisins du Nord. C'est très cool que nous avons une culture si différente et si proche de nous, et ce serait une grosse erreur de ne pas profiter de l'opportunité de l'apprendre. J'adore le français et j'ai beaucoup de chance d'avoir eu l'occasion de l'étudier. Merci beaucoup. Bonjour, je m'appelle Piper Gilmet et j'habite à Moncton, Vermont. Pour moi, le français est une façon de me connecter avec mon héritage. Mes grands-parents étaient canadiens francophones. Maintenant, c'est juste ma grand-mère et elle ne se souvient pas de beaucoup de sa vie. Même si elle ne peut pas me parler de son passé, je peux en apprendre davantage de la culture qui entoure son héritage français. Le français m'aidait à me sentir connecté à elle. Quand j'étudiais le pays francophone, je comprends les aspects de sa vie à la vie de sa famille. Je me sens plus connecté à, avec elle à travers le français. Maintenant, je vois les par des parties de ma culture dans la leçon de français que j'apprends. J'espère approfondir ma compréhension de la langue pour améliorer mon connexion avec mon patrimoine et pour partager avec les générations futures. Merci beaucoup. Très bon, très bon, merci. Bon, OK. Allez, allez. Merci. 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 So, one of, one of the students was just talking about uh, talking with a grandmother who may not have remembered a lot of things but was able to uh, speak French and she was able to catch her the heritage and traditions uh, even though the grandmother couldn't remember a lot of things she was still able to pass it on so I think that's also very important I, I visited recently a patient that was an Alzheimer patient and um, she wasn't remembering her her past but when I stopped speaking French to her she spoke very well and she told me stories in French and her daughter goes, I didn't know she knew that much French. <laughs> so it goes to show you that some of the things you learn as a young person can stay with you and it, it's good for your brain, it's good for your society, it's good for history and, and the future. So um, it's great to see uh, French um, being spoken here today. Um, I think we have, uh, let me see, I'm looking at the time. I want to make sure we're good. And I think we have a little bit of time for, um, I'm not sure if we're going to do. Are we going to do a little bit more music, or are we going to do the introduction? A little bit more music. Okay, la musique, s'il vous plaît. Okay, va y bien. Carol's not here, she had surgery this week, um, so, and she uh, plays the guitar and sings also. Um, we're going to do a, a song called Un Canadien Vin, and it comes from um, around 1837 during the Battle of the Patriot, and when the French and the English were fighting, and the, the French lost, and many had to flee um, Quebec and go live in other areas. So this song is about wanting to go back to Canada, to Quebec, and Canadian. My mommy has sprouted wings, and so we won't accompany this with harmonica, I'll just sing if that's okay. So you told them a little bit about the history of the song, and Canadian Errant. I'm just gonna fill in a little more background in that my own, um, I researched my genealogy dating back to the 1600s in, in Flanders, um, uh, part of France, um, and my Francophone family emigrated down at the time that this song we're going to sing was written because there were not enough places for young, young men to start farms. And they came down to Ellenburg Depot where they could still see Canada, literally from where they live. And uh, the song is about the yearnings that people have for the home that they've known and where all their family are gathered. And to think about the bravery to come to another country and start afresh. And then 
two generations later, my great grandfather moved to Hanover, New Hampshire, and started farming. And um, and then I get to look over that family history. So it's it's like I wonder if they even remembered they came from Quebec by that time. They still spoke French, that's for sure. So I don't know where my my harmonica went, but that's okay. We'll sing it in pitch. What is our pitch? We'll spin it up. You see? Oh, there's a harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know that. You have to look. Thank you very much. All right, nice. You know, when I was growing up, we had music um, in the house. I don't know many of you maybe do, but it was accordions, it was guitars, it was harmonicas, it was violins. 
you know, a whole entourage of music, and just music is a big part of a lot of cultures, just different tones, different sounds. So I would appreciate all of that. Thank you. So I would like to introduce um, someone that I'm meeting for the first time today, Frédérique Horn. She is the Consulate General of France in Boston Remarks. She's a cultural attaché for in uh, France, in Boston. Viennez ici, s'il vous plaît. Nice to meet you. Enchanté. Enchanté. C'est ici. Um, dear Maya Lott, dear Secretary Tabatz, uh, Secretary Deputy Brooks, uh, Madame la Consulte Honoraire de France dans le Vermont, chers représentants de la délégation uh, du Québec, dear students, uh, dear Francophonie friends, au nom du Consulat Général de France à Boston, je suis ravie d'être ici avec vous pour célébrer cette proclamation. This is an important milestone in the Francophonie Month celebration and it's a joy to be here in the Winoski School District for this wonderful occasion. I would like to sincerely thank you for all your commitment and your welcome. I also want to use this occasion to thank the entire organizing team that made this ceremony possible. Nous célébrons en effet aujourd'hui un héritage. La francophonie est une part essentielle de l'identité du Vermont. C'est une histoire commune qui a fasciné, qui a façonné et fasciné votre état et mérite d'être célébré. We are gathered here to celebrate a legacy. Indeed, Francophonie is an integral part of the identity of Vermont. It is a shared history that has shaped your state and deserves to be celebrated. Aujourd'hui, la francophonie du Vermont est toujours bien vivante. Today, Francophonie in Vermont is still very much alive and all of you gathered here today are the living proof of its vitality. The French language holds a special place here in Vermont and I'm particularly glad to be here in the city of Winooski that has such a strong Francophone heritage and continue um, to this day to welcome French-speaking population. So, vive la francophonie of yesterday, today and tomorrow. Vive la francophonie du Vermont. Merci. <laughs> See, so, so um, interestingly enough, the uh, Consul of France in uh, Boston has a delegation here today. I want to thank the whole delegation. I know Marceau, cultural attaches, yes, and yes, and they are in fact going to be having uh, sessions. If I may speak a little bit to that, they're going to be going to UVM. They're going to be going to uh, daycare centers. They're going to be going to different places um, at, that are going to be working on different French language programs. We have with us here today as well a member of the Alliance Francaise Board of Directors, Beth Brody, right here in front. And as you, some of you may not know, the uh, Vermont has a sister city between Burlington, Vermont, and Enfleur, France. And today we have also a few members from that committee, and Richard Leach, my right hands, right here in front. Merci. <laughs> so there are a lot more than just that that I've mentioned. Those are just the ones that have come to mind immediately here, and I just want to recognize some of the people in the room. Thank you very much for coming here today. I think it's real important that we keep these things up and do what we can. So I am more than honored. I am thrilled to represent um, the French community here in Vermont, but I have worked closely with people from France and from Quebec and Canada over the years, and one of my very good friends and longtime partner here is Marie-Josée Duquette. I would like to invite you up. She has been instrumental in putting this event together today with her team in Quebec. They do this for all of New England. They go to all the different New England states. She may actually speak a little bit about that. But without people like Mary Jose and uh, the consuls in, in all the countries, uh, we wouldn't be able to continue and promote all of what we're doing today. So please welcome Mary Jose. Merci beaucoup, Lise. Merci. So should I talk about uh, Expo? 
the, the yeah. <laughs> I know Hockey the expo. Team too, right? I know. <laughs> but I will not talk about this. <laughs> so, un grand merci, un grand merci d'être ici. Thank you for being here. Un grand merci aussi, Lise. It's always a pleasure, you know, for me to be here. And the delegate, Marie-Claude Franca, you know, would like really to be here today. Um, so, Mayor Christine Lott, Secretary Tebet, Deputy Secretary Brooke, Distingué invité, ami du Vermont, bonjour. Um, thank you for uh, Winooski High School for welcoming us. And of course, Liz Verano for being our master of ceremony. She's a wonderful friend of Quebec and a precious partner in everything Franco. So to all of every one of you, thank you for joining us to celebrate Vermont's special relationship with the Francophone world. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here with all of you today and listen to the student on the importance of learning French et aussi d'écouter le groupe Va et Vient. Ça fait du bien justement aux oreilles d'entendre de, de la musique francophone. From a rich history of Franco-Canadian immigration to a more recent francophone migration from around the world, Vermont has been shaped by the francophonie in many ways. La promotion et le rayonnement de la langue française ont toujours été importants pour le gouvernement du Québec et ont guidé nos actions en Nouvelle-Angleterre. Québec est proud to be a part of la francophonie. For us, la francophonie is a family, a space for solidarity and collaboration around a shared language, shared values, and in the case of Vermont, a long-standing relationship. Vermont is a neighbor and a friend. Several activities are often or organized with partners in Vermont. I'm thinking of the Vermont International Film Festival, which often presents more than 17 Quebec films in April this year. Additionally, we had food, film, and friendship on October 29 last year, a great activity with four chefs from Ver Vermont and four chefs from Quebec. And the list can be long, so I will stop here. C'est vraiment un plaisir renouvelé d'être parmi vous et de souligner annuellement la contribution des francophones à la vie économique, politique, sociale et culturelle. Thank you so much for hosting us today. Un grand merci. Bon, uh, on that note, that brings us to a closing. And in closing, I do want to take a moment to just let everybody know there are many francophone events still being planned throughout the year, not just in March. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and self-promote the very next one that I'm going to be participating in. Um, and it's going to be in June. It's going to be a Sailing for Crohn's Awareness. Crohn is a uh, disease of the uh, gust, uh, get in the stomach, disease in the intestines and all that. So something people don't really want to talk about. But we have a sailor from Enfleur, France. He is sailing literally on a sailboat <laughs> from France to Quebec to the United States. He will be making a stop here in Burlington, Vermont at the uh, Champlain uh, Sailing Center on the lake, on Lake Champlain, which is a very similar voyage to what Samuel de Champlain sailed when he came to this country and founded, you know, the new France. So uh, anyone who might be interested, it's June 16th, there will be some postings going out, but it's a really uh, in, very, very um, telling story about someone who suffers with a disease and was able, is able to have a career, he's a young person, uh, but he has a career sailing around the world and competing and doing very, very well at that. So anyway, that, that's happening in June and there's many, many more. In Winooski, there's going to be the French Festival. Um, so keep your eyes open and go to the Alliance Francaise website, go to your school, go to the state of Vermont sites for events. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity to learn more. There's the uh, Boston Consulate has postings of all New England events happening around the New England area. So I want to say thank you again to all our guests and our speakers today, to Winooski, the superintendent of schools, who's here with us today as well. Merci, thank you, for facilitating making this venue available to us to bring our people together bring young people into the room, which is really the most important thing we can do as uh, citizens here in Vermont. So merci beaucoup. On that note, there will be some more music. And please, join us for some other French events and next year, we'll see where we'll be. Merci beaucoup.
You sing with us, okay? Sing with us, huh? <laughs>
does the tulut because it's, it lets you exercise every little sound you can make with your lips and, and play it with rhythm. So I invite you to play it with rhythm with your mouth, even if the words are your own words. <coughs> it's okay. Uh, si mon mouet, vous m'avez dansé. Ah, 